and welcome to That's Where Speaks. Today is Tuesday, September 14th, and this is episode 301. Oh my gosh, it is September, y'all. It's pre-spooky season. We are in, we're tailgating for spooky season right now. Are you ready? I'm actually not, I'm good. Okay. Uh, my name is Amy Beth, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and the Fat S Q R R L on Instagram. Okay, now back to it. <laughs> okay, full confession. I've never been a huge, like, Halloween person. Um, I don't know, like, is that because, like, I don't know. I've just never been a big Halloween person. But I love the Halloween season. Like, I'm not so much into dressing up. I definitely don't want to go to a party. Ever. Um, maybe if I could wear a full mask, that would... Eat. No, it would not. It would not make it any easier. So I'm not really super into the actual Halloweeniness of Halloween. Like, the day O. But I am all about the surrounding spooky season. It's so enjoyable. Sorry, there's been apparently a million train horns. I don't think you go let a whistle. It's really somebody, is somebody on the tracks? Get off the tracks, people. Oh my gosh. I'm such an old lady. I, um, I'm still terrified to stop anywhere near a train track. Is that like a generational thing? Do young people not have that fear? Is that like no longer even a PSA that if you stop on a train track, your car could stall and then the train would hit you? Like, I guess modern cars are not as like prone to just like randomly stalling, but like growing up with a, for a while, a car that only would not go in reverse. Like we always had car troubles. Like the headliner on a car, did we ever have one where the headliner was affixed? Maybe. I don't remember that. <laughs> so, like, I always had a lot of anxiety related to car issues, and I still do. Still. Um, but, like, I am terrified. Anytime I see, anytime there's, like, a question of, like, is there a full car length past the clearance of the train tracks? I can't tell. Maybe that's only seven eighths of a car length. I'm just gonna hang back here. And then other people are like, what are you doing, crazy person? And I'm like, did you not see that again? Were we given PSAs about this? Because I feel like I have a very visceral response to the idea of my car stalling on a train track. We must have watched them as like a ch as children. I don't know, but yeah, I live in fear. <laughs> and when I see other people stop on the train tracks, I'm like, oh my gosh, I cannot witness your death today. Please get off the tracks. Like I have to immediately go through the whole plan in my head of how we can rescue them if the train comes and their car stalls. <laughs> I know some of you do it too. Those of you who don't are just like, some of us are wired a little different. <laughs> Not bad. Just different. <laughs> You'll appreciate us if your car ever stalls on the train tracks and we're nearby. Because we'll have a plan. We'll have a plan. Anyway. <laughs> oh my goodness, y'all. Life is so wackadoodle. So anyway, what were, what were we talking about? 301. It's September. That's beautiful. <gasps> we went apple picking. I actually didn't tell you this last time. Um, if you're new to the podcast, I uh, could have a podcast about apples. That's not true. But I would love to have a podcast about apples, which would allow me to research all the apples. Oh, wait. I just figured out what my passion project is. Uh, there'll be a new Patreon coming soon for my apple pot. No, there won't. But maybe they will. I'm just saying. <laughs> I have a, I kind of have a thing. Like, I'm not going to spite anybody their pumpkin spice latte. I am happy for you to have that pumpkin spice latte. I just want apples. I am, and, and also pumpkin bread. I mean, that's, that's a whole different thing. But, like, I need all of the apples. Actually, there's this, is there an apple spice coffee this year? I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I guess I'll have to try. 
don't think I will. I'm actually kind of just against cinnamon and coffee. I know I'm an outlier. How do you feel? Are you on board with cinnamon and coffee? I'm probably just not fancy enough, y'all. I'm just not fancy enough. But anyway, so we went apple picking like three weeks ago because they said the ones, dude, it is a fellow walking on the sidewalk on the other side of the street. We went like three weeks ago because they said their Cortlands were available and that is my big applesauce apple. And last year was the first year my family was completely on board with applesauce and we ran out. Like before that, like the kid would be like, eh, I don't really want that, I want the stuff in the jar. Or the husband would be like, yeah, I don't care. So this year, last year though, they were totally on board and we ran out of applesauce like in January, I think. I don't know. I could be making that up. So this year we need to make a lot of applesauce. And I am weeing. I am going to demand help on this one. So the Cortland's were ready. I was like, that's it. That's our pie app. Oh, that's our sauce apple. Let's go pick some apples. So we get there and um, it was going to be like 85, 90 degrees that day. So I was not super excited about picking, but I was like, whatever. What? You got to do what you got to do. We get there. They don't have you pick. That's never happened before. I mean, last year was wacky because hi. And then also there was a very late frost here, a Mother's Day frost that really damaged a lot of fruit crops. But that was not the case this year. And I figured even though we are still in the pandemic, I figured most folks have kind of had, a, they can, they've figured out how to operate. It's not like a, you know, it's not still coming out of like what's happening. But there was no you pick and I was just like, And then she also said the Cortlands really weren't ready. Like they were technically ripe, but they weren't like really ready, ready. So after confirming in a very like panicked voice with her, the woman at the orchard, after confirming the very panicked voice with her that the Cortlands would still be available when they started doing UPIC, which was like September 4th, Labor Day weekend in the US, uh, and that there would still be plenty because they had a very good crop. And let me just tell you, they, Spoiler, they do have a great crop this year. I'm going to move this table because I feel like I'm nudging you and it's probably making you seasick. Um, so we had, so we got some over there because I mean, how do, I can't go to the orchard and not get an apple. And also like I needed an apple. I was ready to eat an apple. So they had Zest Stars. They had lots of varieties, but they had Zest Stars and L Stars. And I feel like, I feel pretty confident that I've tried both of these apples in the past and just been like, yeah. But I think I had them when they weren't the right ripeness. Like, I think maybe I tried them when, like, the Akanis were ready, which is, like, July, like, late July. Um, because they were... And in fact, we made sauce with a combination of the two. Zestars are, they're both like a sweet tart. I would say um, they both, they have a softer texture. Like they're not hard like a winter apple, like, um, like a Jonathan or like a later apple. But they're not quite as soft as like a Cortland. They're kind of like a yellow delicious a little bit. Um, they're maybe like... They're both very similar. The Zest Stars are a little bit bigger than the Elf Stars, and I like the Zest Stars a little bit better. They're a little juicier. Um, but the Elf Stars would be, well, the person at R. Richard said that that's her favorite for pies. They do cook down very nicely. And the Zest Stars did pretty good too. Um, because we did make a tr like a dozen, like a trial of sauce, just a dozen pints. People were like, what? <laughs> There's only three of us, y'all. Can I just discuss that my mom, we never had homemade applesauce when I was growing up, but we did have fried apples, which is just like apples cooked, apple slices peeled and cooked in like butter with maybe just a little bit of sugar on them. Oh, childhood. Mine never tastes as good. Although I will still eat them. <laughs> but my mom talked about they had homemade applesauce. I don't remember if I gave it to them or if they made their own. They probably made their own. And she was like, Wait, you only can it in pints? How is that enough? And I was like, <laughs> well, to be honest, I could can it in those like pint and a halfs, but we don't really need to eat like two cups of applesauce per person. 
or more. <laughs> but they are delicious. But anyway, that was off track. <laughs> like there's a track anywhere here. There's not one. Um, but anyway, so yes, I do recommend the Zest Stars and the L Stars. Even if you've tried them before and not been thoroughly impressed, either this is like an excellent year for them, or again, we just had them at a better point in the cycle than we've had them before, because I would definitely go with them again. But then we did go back and we did draw you pick. We um, currently have a hundred pounds at least. Nah, maybe not. Anywhere, like a half bushel of apples weighs anywhere from like 20 to 25 pounds ish. But these I think are going to be 25 pounds because the, the Cortlands were huge. Now I will say they had a lot of worm damage. And now worm damage is one of those things that, and I say worm, it's not like an earthworm. It's like some sort of little parasite. I don't actually know if it's actually even a worm, to be honest with you. But yes, I do think it's a worm. It maybe is a larva though, not a worm. That's very likely. I don't know what it is. I should know that. What's wrong with me? Anyway, so if you're picking your apples to like keep over the winter or like to keep as long as you can, that's a really big problem because those stupid little buggers will just eat through one apple and then they'll go through another one and they'll just eat their tiny little skinny spaghetti sized tunnel through the apples. But then that will make the apple go bad very quickly. And also it's just not fun to be like, something ate this before I got to it. Um, and so for winter apples, that's a really big problem. But for these, I knew we were going to make sauce out of them. And it was like, I don't want that. But there were just so many gorgeous giant apples that had like one little spot on them that I was like, I feel like I just don't have it in my heart to not use that apple. It's going to get cooked. So no matter what's it, just extra protein, it's fine. All of you were like, we're never eating at your house. That's totally fine. <laughs> I completely understand. But like, cause there was just so, I mean, the trees were so heavy that they were, the lots of the branches were almost touching the ground. Some of them were touching the ground. Um, and some of the Cortlands were like, I mean, like they barely, you could like basketball them. Like they were like this, they were huge. So it was very fun to pick. We've picked two bushels in like five minutes. Okay, it's probably like half an hour, but I've already started like refreshing the the web the web page every day just to make sure that the keeping apples are in because Cortlands do not like a I'm not a fan of eating Cortlands like they're too soft for me and actually I think that their flavor is fairly one is too one dimensional just for like um, out of hand eating but they do make a nice sauce they cook down very well like they just they lose their texture which is nice for making applesauce, especially if you're making a lot of it and you don't want it to cook the applesauce too long. But yeah, so that's this weekend is the, um, the great saucing weekend. I wonder how many pints we'll get out of a hundred pounds of apples. See, we made, it took about a peck to make about a dozen jars. And so there's, okay, I'm not even doing this math with you. Oh my gosh, let's do the math. Alexa, how many pecks are in a bushel? There are four U.S. pecks in one U.S. bushel. I thought that's what it was, but I wasn't sure. So if there are four pecks in a bushel, then we figure about 48 jars. Because we didn't even use a whole peck. Did we? Yeah, we bought a peck. But we did use a whole peck. Almost so. Because we actually bought two pecks. Okay, one of each. So if four, so that's 48 jars. Okay, so we should have 72 jars. No, wait, we should have 96 jars. <laughs> wait, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Because we got two bushels. Right, that might be too much. Whatever. It keeps just fine. And my parents will always accept applesauce. Oh, man, I may have over. We'll make some pies, some pie stuff too. It's fine. It's fine. It's totally fine. <laughs> do you see me already being like, do I have enough jars? I'm sure we do. Anyway, 
going on? You're like, whoa, I did not sign up for this. You know what? You did. And you can always stop. <laughs> There's no test at the end. You don't have to watch the part you're not interested in. But apple time. Do you have a favorite apple in your area? Sorry, somebody just pulled up in front of the house, so I got distracted. Do you have a favorite apple in your area? I always love hearing about your different apples. It's so exciting. Um, so we'll have, I mean, I kind of want to do a road trip and do all the orchards since we had such a good year this year. And last year I didn't go to any other orchards. But I don't know if time will allow. Oh, one year. One year when I'm super fancy. And I don't have a child in school probably. One year when I'm super fancy. Oh my gosh, that's what we should do. I should just rent an RV and go on like an apple picking slash meetup tour. I need to do people, it'll be so fun. We could just like hang out and pick apples and then just hang out and it would be the best. Yeah, this sounds like what we need to do. Okay, I got at least four or five years get working on this plan. <laughs> okay. Okay. So anyway, so it's apple time. And then speaking of hanging out together, oh my gosh, if you're a patron of the podcast, not only are we doing discord right now. So we have like a little discord group where we're doing like a faux Instagram. Um, I know it's not as like functional as old school Instagram, but like it's also not now Instagram, which by the way, I just like couldn't. I'm going to have a little about Instagram. It's just not even fun to look at anymore. Like I only see like three of your things and the rest of the things I'm like, when did I show interest in this at all? But whatever. That's another thing altogether. So we're doing that. We're doing a little photo share and then like maybe I'll branch out into like figuring out some other ways to talk, but right now it's that but like are you you can always hit me up if you have suggestions about how you think things could be developed better but also if you're a patron of the podcast I've been putting out patreon we are doing virtual knit nights like during them twice this month and then I might continue on with these because I will be honest with you I was a little afraid of doing the virtual knit, virtual knit night because we're doing them like over zoom they're not recorded or anything so it is a very just like you're here you're enjoying it don't worry if you're missing it like there'll be another one you know I prop I might kind of bring up things if they were especially pertinent although no, I probably won't do that because really everybody had such good things to say I would then have like another 12 hour episode of me just talking about how great y'all are um and how brilliant you are and how much you hate roundabouts or love roundabouts I don't know I love roundabouts but I feel like roundabouts are like U-Scan. Remember when they brought out U-Scan for this first time? Are you old? And people did not know how to work the U-Scan and I would get livid because I was like, people, y'all need to take a class at U-Scan. Like you need to be U-Scan certified. Like I need you to watch a little video about how not to put your purse on the scale. It used to be, a, it was very weight sensitive in the old times. Now it's less so. Uh, I need you to know that you can't put your purse on there and that you can't like hold your toddler on the scale because it'll mess everything up. So I need you to be used to can certified. Well, I feel like roundabouts are the same way. Like they just toss them out and folks who've never seen a roundabout or again, have seen roundabouts, but think they know how to work a roundabout because hi. So really I need y'all to get roundabout certified. I need people to watch a video. I need there to be like a practice roundabout that we all go to and we just like get a little sticker for our car that's like this person knows how to do a roundabout and um, if you don't know follow them see what they do observe maybe just like pull off and watch how the roundabout works for a minute okay okay sorry that was a rant anyway love them or hate them I don't care they are really much better for the environment. Did you know that? Because stoplights cause a lot more emissions. I had no idea that that was even a motive for roundabouts, but whatever. Um, yeah, it's true, it's a thing. <laughs> but around, like, love them or hate them, they're here. 
and we need to learn how to use them. I'm just saying. So whether we're talking about roundabouts or like actually important things that like touched my heart because people like used their voices to talk about representation and how much it matters to them. So whatever it was that we talk about, it was awesome. And so I was actually trying to start to say that um, I was very nervous to do the virtual knit nights because um, the way my brain works, I have a lot of try. I have, I have a lot of trouble talking and looking at people, especially when there's like a lot of people. And I also have a tendency that does to then overthink what I did or did not say and how I said it and then worry a lot about that. But I just wanted to tell you that we will continue to have them, I think, as long as y'all are interested because I felt, I felt like, I don't know, it just felt nice. Like I didn't, I did worry still about it afterwards, but I just told myself that it was okay and that it was fine because I wasn't worried about what anybody else said in a bad way. So nobody else was probably worried about me. And if you ever are, you can always tell me, always. You can always tell me. Um, so yeah, I was a little bit worried about it, but I think it went okay. It seemed like people had lovely things to say. People laughed a lot. So yay that. So thank you so much if you were there. If you weren't there, well, we're going to have another one. What did I say? September, September something. It's in the Patreon group. So the 28th, I mean, that sounds good. This one was on a Sunday, so the next one will be on a Saturday whatever that Saturday is. The last Saturday in September, I think. And it'll be in the evening. Okay. If you would like to become a member of the Patreon, you can totally do that. You can see the link in my link tree that's linked um, in the show notes of the YouTubes. And then I'll send you a thing about Discord and then you can find out all the things. Okay. Okay. But if you don't want to do Discord, don't worry. I'm posting um, VKN links on the actual Patreon group. So you don't have to keep up with Discord if that's not your jam. I totally get it. Okay, what else? What did I say? Mm -hmm. I think those are all the things I needed to say. Yeah, so let's talk about craft stuff. <gasps> what? It's true. It's like, I think I just, we talked about what I was reading last time too. We don't need to do that again. Okay, so first off, stitching. I finished my little stitchery. Look how cute it is. So this is from Cozy Blue. It is a PDF that I purchased that I then printed on like the sticky solve kind of, it's like a sticky washable interfacing. Basically magic, I think is what we call that. Um, and this is just linen. I think this is this is either five or seven I think it's five ounce linen I'm pretty sure this is five ounce linen from yeah it is this is five ounce linen from fabric underscore store dot com um in the, like a natural color whatever like oh so cute and then this is just some felt that I used for the backing and I just stitched that on and I'm gonna hang it on my little wall I bought this forever ago and was just like, did not, just didn't start it. Like I just waited forever to start it. But then when I did, it was really enjoyable and I want to do some more. And um, I definitely have plans. Oh my gosh, I'm entering into a manic phase of crafting. Do you feel that? Do you feel like that? Maybe that's not the right word. I apologize. I'm just feeling like a really big upsurgence in my crafting like energy and ideas um and so that's been a little bit like ka 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 but one of the things i purchased was let's see there's definitely some other cozy blues that i really dig but then my friend sarah who is another crafty girl oh my gosh she just had a cutest update ever you must check out her her dye process is gorgeous do i have i'm sure i have her things right here uh, but there, there's such, she has such a unique way of doing colors that I just find it in, in, endlessly fascinating. 
Like, isn't that just gorgeous? I keep bumping you. I'm so sorry. It's not me. It's my hernia. It's just pushing the table out of the way. My apologies. Hello, lady. Um, she just has such a beautiful dye process that her yarns are just endlessly enjoyable. So again, that's another crafty girl. But the reason I started talking about her is because she was doing a stitching, a stitchery. Um, and she was using linen for her stitchery. By the way, if you want to follow her on Instagram, it's super cute. And it's like a stitchery kit from Russia, which we've already talked about. How exciting it is to get things from Eastern Europe as an 80s kid. This is very exciting. I mean, I remember when I watched the wall, I mean, I know Russia's on the wall, but you know what I mean. Like, I can remember watching VH1, watching the wall come down. VH1. That's not right. Channel 1. VH1 is the music thing. Is that even around anymore? Is VH1 still a thing? Channel 1. Anderson Cooper. OG. Just saying. I was there. But so she was stitching on linen and I have done cross stitch on, I think I have tried to do, okay, I know I have tried to do cross stitch on linen, but I just got like, like my, the visually, I sometimes get very confused about how it looks and like counting two for f one and like the whole thing. And so like, I've just not tried it again. Um, but she offered a really good suggestion about how to count. And then I thought, maybe I'll just try a little thing and just see how it goes. So I got this pattern, which is Plum Street Samplers, and there are the Autumn Salt Boxes, because I love salt box houses. I have had a love of salt box houses for as long as I can remember. I just love them. I love the way they look. And so I was looking for like fall stitcheries or something, and this came up. There are like summer ones and winter ones but I really like these now I'm not totally into the whole Polaroid like framing of them like I'm not going to do that I don't know it's just not for me um but I do really like the stitcheries themselves and they're quite small like they're only 60 something 63 by 81 stitches and I got linen which by the way when I got it I was like this is the tiniest linen I've ever seen in my life. And in fact, I think it's only 32 because this says 36 is what they were stitched on. So we will see how it goes. I don't know. We're gonna see. I did get, I've never got the fancy floss before. So this isn't all the colors because the place I bought the pattern from, which was Floss and Fabrics on Etsy, which they're in Ohio, so that made me excited. Um, but this is Weeks Dye Works. I've never bought their fancy hand dyed floss before but I was just living it up if I'm gonna knit if I'm gonna cross stitch on this teensy tiny linen I'm gonna do it with fancy stuff also like when you're used to spending like 20 something dollars on a skein of yarn two dollars and fifty cents for some floss doesn't seem quite as bad as it did when I was a kid <laughs> now again if you're doing like a big thing with like a ton of colors that would add up real fast but so yeah, so that's the next thing. And then there's something else that I... Oh, then the other thing I want to do is this stupid pumpkin that I saw on Etsy. It's a white pumpkin stitchery. But it's actually embroidery. It's not... Um, where did my phone... My phone just dinged at me and I don't even... I don't even know where it is. Okay, the dogs were losing their minds, and so I thought, oh, I'll just go and look for that pumpkin stitchery while I wait for them to calm down, because, I mean, Lord knows, the mailman's never been to our house before. So they're gonna need a minute to calm down. So then I was looking at my, so then I was trying to find that stitchery, which of course I can't find. But then I was looking at my Etsy cart, and I was just like, oh my gosh, I wanna show them all of these things. So I might just put in here like a really silly, like just like look at my um, Etsy favorites right now because I think it's fun. And then I was like, oh my gosh, this would be the best thing ever. <laughs> Forget what's in your purse. I want to know what's in your Etsy cart. Is there a way we could do that? Like, could you like, just like, you know, cause like on my phone I can do like a screen video of like scrolling through something. 
just want to see what's in your Etsy cart. Or again, on your Etsy favorites. What else? I think it'll be fun. We'll see. Maybe I'll put it in here. Maybe I won't. Who knows? So I know it's very silly, but we just got to look at the Etsy cart together. I mean, it's not, it's my favorites. It's not my cart, but like, this is just a silly thing that we should do together every once in a while. I wish I could figure out how to like, have you share with me as well, but Maybe that's just like a VKN thing. Maybe I can't organize that like systemically, but whatever. So this is totally not the pumpkin pattern I was talking about. The pumpkin stitchery with the white pumpkin. I can't find it. It's just, maybe I dreamt it. Maybe it's something I need to make. But like, look how stinking cute this is. Right? I would personally make it on linen because I'm just me. Like on the more rustic looking linen because that's just what I like. But like I love these like little bittersweet thingies and maybe like these cotton bowls. Ah, I need to make that. And then did you know that you needed to make a goat punch needle? Needle punch? What's it called? Punch needle. This is like doing rug hooking but like with embroidery floss. So I am not entirely sure that this is my jam. I've never, I don't think I've ever actually made one of these before. But, ah, and then like, oh my gosh, this is regular like needle punch with like yarny yarn. And I mean, I want to make all these things. Oh, see, we're running out of battery together. Oh my gosh. And then this, I don't even know what's happening here. This is the wool, like the strips of wool fabric, but you could totally do it with yarn too. But I will say that it looks very charming in the wool strips. Right. Cute. I'm dying. I love it. So stinking cute. And then the stitchery. Oh, look, it's a salt box and it's spooky. And it's a sampler. That's all the good things. Oh, and then this thread one, too. This is again the needle punch, which again, I mean, like it has potential, right? Because theoretically, you can do it with like fingering weight yarn. But I tried it and was not successful once. But maybe that's just me. It's just like user failure. Oh my gosh, my dog better not bark at anything. What is this? Look at this one. This is another one. How cute is that? I don't understand why that's cute, but it is. And then did you even know that you needed a rug punched? I mean, I would use it for double points. I think they're showing it like as you know, like holding your tools of rug hooking, but I would definitely. And like, how cute is it with all those different fabrics? Ugh, dying, dying. <gasps> and then look at her. She is a wool witch, y'all. She is in fact a wool witch. Now I must say, I am, I'm not entirely sure what she's holding. I gotta be honest. I, I don't know what that is. Is that her broom? Is she like, I don't need this broom. I'm riding my sheep because I'm a wool witch. Or is like that her very giant rug hooking tool, which is maybe something she used magically to create her world of rug hookingness that she is actually in. And so it's like very meta. I don't know what's happening there. But either way, I'm on board and I think we need to make this. And again, it does look so good on the wool strips. I cannot have another craft. That has like another supply set. I just can't. And look at her. She's thread. She's she's wool. She's string. All right. Ah. So I know this was very silly and like probably funny. I don't know who any of these human beings are who make these things. I'm assuming that they are lovely and amazing, but I have not vetted them in any way. Uh, I'm just excited about these things that they're making. So pa 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 pa. Right. And like what could this be your tea cozy? Is that what it is? A wool dummy board project. I don't even know what that means. Whatever. It would be cute shape for, what is that? Is it just like a thing? Just so it sits up? Is that what the dummy board means? Whatever. I thought it was a tea cozy and it'd be very cute for that. Anyway, so anyway. <laughs> there's just too many cute, spooky, fall, yummy things out there. What? Everything is so cute. All right, back to the show, okay? Okay. Yeah. And so then we should talk about spinning. Um, I accidentally bought a fleece. <laughs> What's wrong with me? <laughs> so many things. I know, don't start answering. Don't start answering. Don't start. 
Um, I, you know, in my defense, I haven't bought any other ones this year. Maybe. No, I did buy that other one. But it was bad. It wasn't useful. <laughs> I bought one in... Did I buy one in May? No, I don't think I was thinking that was last year. No, I don't know what's happening anymore. Whatever. It's been a minute since I bought one. Uh, but I do have now, like... War fleeces in my house. Oh my goodness. And now this will, this will be like an interesting, like this will either be people will be like, oh my gosh, you need to seek psychological help. Or people will be like, that's nothing. <laughs> so that's like the one bad thing about collecting yarn things when you're a yarn person and by yarn, I mean wool things. Is that like unlike collecting like precious moments figurines where all I have to do with them in the future is dust them? Maybe not me, but you know, when companies coming over, maybe. Um, yeah, the wool it does carry with it some promise of future work is not the right word, but work some labor. So like I I teeter totter back between back and forth between being like precious moments these are mine I'm just collecting a collection um I teeter totter between that and then being like oh I got too much work to do what am I doing why am I giving myself more work what's happening there's nobody in my life who is keeping track to be like um yeah you really need to work more on these things that you've brought upon yourself like that's just a totally interior silliness that's not helpful to anybody or anyone but I do go back and forth <laughs> ah, but it was a Tarhi fleece I love Tarhi so much and it seemed like the people who were selling it really needed to sell their fleeces and it's been a bad year and like we really need to support the American wool market these are all silly justifications Silly. But I did buy it. Mm, I really love Tarhi. And, mm, I did wash a sample of it and just used hand combs to comb it. And I think maybe that's what I'm going to do. I don't know. Oh, it would be such a fun project to just hand comb the whole thing. Or, you know, like two pounds of it. And then I'll be like, I'm done. And then I could just sell the rest to you. I mean, that's a possibility. Right? I don't have to do all the fleece. I could just do some of it. I could just rehome it with you. <laughs> do any of you like use hand cards to do your fleeces? I'm really wondering about like organization. Like how do you, I need like a big egg basket with a lid on it or something. Cause like that's a lot of active fluff to manage. Like, cause you're going to have some clean fleece. You're going to have some carded fleece. Okay. It's really just two piles, but it just seems like, so I just need like two vessels to have for fleece. What do you do? Do you, do you do these things? Cause like, you know, if you're drum carding, you just kind of do a bunch of it at once. And then like, you just like, it just seems easier. Like, like, workflow wise it seems like more uh clear in my head but when you do hand carding you don't do like you don't hand card all well I wouldn't hand card all day so I need to like somehow like kind of keep this process maybe I need like a two-sided bat I'm like look at me I'm inventing things I need to buy if I just use two project bags because I might have some of those Maybe that's what I do. Just use two project bags. That's what I could do, right? So anyway, we'll see how it goes. I really love the idea of being a person who hand cards a fleece. Will I be a person who hand cards a fleece? I don't know. We'll see. But I enjoyed the little bit that I did. It's kind of like hand sewing versus machine sewing. You don't have to like have a giant thing out that takes up space. You don't have to just do that because it's like extra intense. You just kind of do a little bit of time which I enjoy. We'll see how it goes. 
Uh, but yeah, oops, I bought a fleece. It's for the craft's future. <laughs> it's my civic duty to buy American wool. I mean, I'm a patriot, what can I say? <laughs> Um, so then let's talk about knitting and crocheting. Um, I don't have any more finished crochet thingy hoodles, but I do have a whole little bag of center bits. So this is my little bag my friend Corey made me, which I love. I'm going to make you some, I think. I want to make some like patchworky ones. Wouldn't that be fun? I should do that. I've actually also been, um, in sewing world, I've been working on a test sew, um, so I'm excited to show you that when it's ready, but I can't show it to you yet. And I did a bunch of hand stitching on the test sew. So it actually took me a lot of my crafting time this time around. So just FYI. But I have a whole bunch of these little things. Meow. For my little crochet cardigan. Cardigan. It's another one that's kind of like hard to manage, like, because you have to do all these different colors. I don't know, whatever. But so I'm excited. I, I wanted to make a bunch of circles it's like two dozen circles and then I just have my like little white yarn in there to do edges with so when I'm feeling it I can work on that yes and then I've been work I worked a little bit during our zoom meeting oh, there's a pen in here took this on an errand today all sorts of nonsense in my knitting bag so I'm knitting this sock this is the twizzler sock and i'm knitting it i don't know i can't tell you is it knit cuff down toe up i don't know but i'm knitting mine cuff down and this is knit spin farms um 90 percent superwash tarhi 10 percent nylon it's the only sock yarn i want to knit with at, the, at this time um i'm not <laughs> not overstating that at all every time i knit on it i'm like why am i knitting with anything else ever it's so enjoyable and look how cute the colors are so here it is. Oh, and then here it is without in just like stockinette, right? And it's been farmed as awesome stuff. But I just really, I, I'm not loving knitting with superwash nylon or superwash merino nylon right now. Right now. I mean, for like the last six months to a year. Uh, I'm just not loving it as much. So I might do, um, I might do a de-stash of some of my superwash merino self-striping yarns and it would not be because the, the dyers aren't amazing in fact that's the reason I haven't done it so far is because I'm like but I love these colors but I'm just not working on socks as much because my little mamaw and papaw don't need them because my mamaw's gone and my papaw doesn't know that he wants those socks right now um so um yeah I might do a de-stash of some of my superwash self-striping I might do that what's today September 14th there's an update in the, update in the shop September 15th one on October 1st um, maybe I'll do the D stash on October 1st too in case you want a bag maybe I'll do that yay so I really do like Superwash Tar Heat. Uh, again, nothing at all wrong with Superwash Marine and Island. Nothing at all wrong with it. I just really like the grippiness of the Tar Heat. Um, it just, it, I just like it. And the Merino is just a little bit slick for my tension or something. Like, I feel like I have to actively pull on the yarn more to get a good sock tension. And it just is a little bit less pleasant to um, work on. But I have so many beautiful little yarns that could use a new home. Maybe I'll do that. But just to clarify, to reiterate, it would not in any way be because these dyers are not amazing. It would only be because tastes change. You know what I mean? Like, I, again, I'm almost doing this for 10 years now. And tastes change over that time, right? Like, it just happens. And it's silly for them not to get good use. So what else do I have? Oh, I'm knitting on my... A soft shawl by Vera Valamaki, and I am knitting that with um, Espace Tricot's Sunday Morning in the fingering weight. They also have a DK. Um, it's super. It's BF. It's not superwash. Um, it's BFL 
Massum. So 75% BFL, 25% Massum. Uh, 432 yards to 4 grams, 395 meters. I'm knitting with colors Simple, Shh, and Wanderlust. This yarn was given to me by Espos Trico, but it was not with any sort of strings. <laughs> there were no strings attached. There were so many strings attached, but not in that way. Just in an actual literal way in that it is made of string. Um, so here is mine. So I got my little stitch marker, right? Oh my gosh, what? Tilting Planet. I was like, why can't I think of who she is all of a sudden? I might have like a lot of her stitch markers. And if um, you've lost out on one that you wanted, it might've been me. <laughs> Cause I love them. Um, Tilting Planet, she's on Etsy and on Instagram and things. So, so here is mine so far. I'm going to try not to let it slip off the needles because it does want to do that because I have it on a short needle. Um, so yeah, so I'm striping. I started with the lavender, the smoky lavender, sort of striping with this like dusty mauve. And then my big striper on the bottom will be this beautiful green. Isn't this a great green? It is, you know, a lot of like forest greens have a little bit too much blue in them for me, but this one is excellent. It's not quite an olive. It doesn't have that much yellow in it, but it also does not have, it's like, it doesn't have yellow or blue, but somehow it's green. But you know what I mean? It's not leaning hard. It's just a nice foresty, green. Very fern under story like. Hmm, I really like it. So I'm really excited to get started on the green. I'm fairly close. I think I've been like another 10-ish rows of this. And wouldn't it, oh, I'm kind of disappointed because I'm going to run out of the pink. I'm going to use almost all of it anyway. But wouldn't that be like the best mitt colors together? I'm really having a pink and green moment in my life right now. I don't even know who I am, y'all. It's crazy. It's wild in here. It's wild. Okay, and then I worked more on my sweater. So this is the Azor sweater. Um, by Orlan Suchet. It is sized to 65 and a half inch bust circumference. And I don't know what she suggests for the ease. So I apologize. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, sample is shown with eight inches of positive ease. It's intended to be worn with five to eight inches. I have no idea what size I'm knitting. <laughs> it definitely does not have five inches of positive ease. I just don't, I don't love an extra, like I just like a sweater that's got either sometimes negative ease, sometimes zero ease, at most one or two inches, because it gets crazy. For just, again, my own personal jam. So here it is, I've got a sleeve done. That's right, kids. And it even makes clicky sounds, which is very exciting. So now I just have this sleeve to do and then a neck band. And I'll be done. I'm just dropping stitches left and right. Told ya. I'm going wild. But wild. Okay. And then, oh, I don't know if this project is going to continue. But it's so cute, I just had to try it. She's had 75 other things that are super cute since I cast this on. I tell you what, some of these pattern desires are just the crazy greatest. Um, bah, 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 that's my to-do list. <laughs> oh God, do you see the stinking chicken? What? Do you see her behind? We had a great discussion about, about Melissa McCarthy's butt in the last um, Patreon Zoom meeting. 
This chicken has an equally awesome behind. I did not use the word behind. <laughs> this pattern is by, do you know who it is? She is like the most prolific toy pattern writer ever. She's got like a million patterns. And she just like keeps churning them out. It's not just because she's been doing... Did I like just not print the first page because I'm the worst? Here we go. Claire Garland and Dot Pebbles Knits. Hen. It's called Hen. <laughs> anyway. She, and she gives away like a free pattern like once a month or something. Like she like has one of her patterns for free for a whole month or something. She's wild. She's wild. Uh, now I will say she writes her patterns flat. <laughs> Which is one of the reasons I have not knit a bunch of her things in the past. I did start a duckling. Um, but it's still. Actually it might actually be in this bag. Is it in this bag? No. That's just the yarn from it. Oh my gosh, there's a whole other project here I forgot about. Not for today. Like, I mean, I have forgotten that it exists. Mm, that's so cute. This little crochet shawl that I started. It's also got a stitch marker on it from Tilting Planet because I have a problem, I told you. Oh, this is so cute, but it's taking forever. But it is really cute. I gotta get back to that. Okay, sorry. <laughs> But anyway, here's my chicken head so far. I know, right? Like the, the duck I started, I just sort of knit it in the round, even though it was written flat. But this chicken looks way too complicated for me to try to like, not that I couldn't convert it, but it seems more reasonable just to seem like, right? You knit them with mohair. I do love knitting toys with mohair. It's the best. Uh, because it fills in any of your little holes that you make. You don't have to knit it as tight a gauge. It's just the greatest. So for toys, I say 100% you need to either be using woolen spuns or using some sort of fluffy thing. I read an article this week. Was it an article or just a post? What's the difference anymore? I don't know. And it was all about like <laughs> this title that was like, stop lying. You <laughs> Eight holding strands of yarn together to knit. And I was like, okay, I wasn't lying. I mean, I don't dislike it. <laughs> I felt very personally attacked. I, so if you think I've been lying, I've not been lying. Um, it's really not a problem to hold stitches together or strands of yarn together to knit for me. But I understand if it is for you and that is okay. But like, I'm not lying. <laughs> It wasn't any of you. It's just funny. Again, like how certain things can strike you as like a personal attack when, I mean, even if they are, whatever. <laughs> like, um, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's other stuff going on. Like, maybe just reevaluate where your anger's going. <laughs> But I get it. Like, I understand. Like, if it is a problem for you and, like, everybody's like, oh, yes, do this. And you're like, this is not fun for me. And I can see how you'd feel like it was, like, some sort of conspiracy. But sometimes we just like doing different things. There are a bunch of knitters on my uh, VKN night that like to purl. Some of them only want to use double points. They don't like the magic loop. We can all just exist. And, you know, if there's ever a shortage of materials, that's better for us. Just each have our own little thing. Just saying. Okay, I think that's all of my stuff. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I think I already said this quickly, but, like, shop update September 15th with fall bags. Okay. October 1st, I'm going to have a library card update. Would you be interested? I'm just going to put this out there. Would you be interested in having library cards with only knitting titles on them? 
that's something you would want. I mean, I thought about this a long time ago and just never like got off on it. Got off. Never just made progress on it. I'm not even gonna try to dig out. Um, and then I was like, oh, I shouldn't say anything because then if somebody else uses that idea, I'll be like, boo-hoo. But you know what? I'm just gonna ask if you would be interested. So if you're interested, just drop a note in the YouTube or on Patreon or any of the other ways you can contact me. Um, but I thought that might be fun, but it also might just be like too specific. Y'all might be like, no, I like to read real books, not net egg books. They're both real books, even if you only listen to them. Be challenging though to listen to a knitting book. Not not knitters on like That's totally listen. Oh I wish we had that. I wish we had easy like, reading us knitters on my neck. Oh my gosh, have you been listening to Sarah Pomegranate on Yarns at Yin Hu and her Elizabeth Zimmerman ish series? I hadn't started listening to it. I knew it was out there, but I just hadn't like started because you know life and things. Um I started listening to it. Oh, it's so fun so far. I like to hear, okay, so I have like a whole thing with like academia and like sometimes I get really frustrated with it. You know, there's a lot of classism, there's a lot of racism, there's a lot of like cultural gatekeeping. There's like, there's just problems. Okay, like, however, there's lots of research and I do love research. Um, so, yes. So anyway, so. Sarah Pomegranate is a gift and she's, it's not her research materials. It is another human being's research materials, but it's all about Elizabeth Zimmerman. So if you're interested, she's even made this episodes distinct so that if you don't want to listen to knitting content and you just want to listen to about that, that you can. And so that's super awesome. I'm just listening to episode number one. I'm like very much rationing it. Like I am only listening it, listening to it on the way home from dropping my child off to school, which is only like 10 minutes. I'm a person who's to drop their child off at school. Can I just discuss? Whatever. Um, <laughs> anyway, but that's an exciting thing that's in the world. Ah, world. Oh my gosh, I'm throwing stitcheries. Ah, I hope you find some apples that are from a place that is close to you that is very exciting. Every apple that you buy that's close to you is an apple that doesn't get shipped to you from Chile. I'm just saying. Just saying. Um, what else? I think that's all. Oh, so yeah, I might do that yarn stash on October 1st. We'll see if you're into self-striping. Um, yeah. Thanks for coming to visit. It was lovely to see you. Oh, I forgot to tell you what snacks we had, but we kind of are short on snacks today, but there are apples. <gasps> There's apples and cheese. I know what you came over for. There's apples and cheese, you're fine. All right, well, I will talk to you next time. Bye.